Okay, let's get started. For resistors, it doesn't matter which direction you solder them into the PCB, they aren't polarized. I like to bend the ends kind of like this and then stick them in their designated spot in the PCB and solder them in. We put them in their spot here. And I like to bend the inside so they stay in place. And now we'll solder them in. Now that that resistor is soldered into the PCB, we'll do the other nine and make them look just like that. Be sure to keep your workstation clean. Okay, here's the PCB with the 10 resistors installed. There's the back. And now we're going to move on to Step two, which is installing the diode D1. The diode is polarized, so it does matter the direction that you install it into the PCB. You can see there that it has a little line on one side and the component has a marking as well to put it in the correct direction. So we'll solder that in the same way as the resistors. Next are the sockets for our transistors. We'll solder in the sockets and then later if we want to change transistors in the pedal, we can just pop them out without having to solder or heat up the PCB. So we'll stick these in their designated spot and solder them in. So the capacitors in this step are not polarized. It doesn't matter which direction you solder them in. They do have notation on them that tell you exactly their values. You can match that up with your instructions. Find its designated spot on the PCB and solder it in. Pretty simple. We'll do that with all these capacitors and move on to the next step. So the trim pot's mount into the PCB a specific way. It's pretty simple to see how because their legs that you solder in match the same pattern that is notated on the PCB. We use these to bias the pedal so they're kind of like an extra potentiometer inside the pedal to adjust how much the external potentiometers affect the sound. So we'll stick these in and solder them onto the PCB. The field transistor is polarized and does go in a certain way. It's easy to match up the top of the field transistor with the pattern on the PCB. So you just stick those in when you match them up and solder it in like you have been with the rest of the components. So in this step, the long leg of the capacitor would mount in the PCB on the side notated with a plus because it's polarized so it needs to be mounted in a certain direction. So we put that in its 
designated spot and we'll solder it in just like we have been with all the other components. This kit come with six rubber feet, four to go on the bottom of the pedal, and one to go on each potentiometer to insulate the PCB from being able to touch the metal on the back of the potentiometer once it's mounted. Now we're going to trim up some wires at about 4 centimeters and solder those to the legs of the potentiometer. They will later connect to the PCB once it's mounted inside the enclosure. In this step, we'll attach the wires that we had soldered to the potentiometers in the previous step to their designated spot on the PCB following the instructions. I chose to do this first because there was more room to work, and then I'll mount my PCB to the legs of the LED that I had previously installed into the enclosure. Now we'll mount the PCB onto the LED legs, the long leg going into the plus side. So here's our mounted PCB in the enclosure. Notice we've had to push down the transistors a little bit so that the back will fit on the enclosure once we are completed. The instructions mention this if you look closely. Now we're moving on to steps 21 and 22. A couple more wires connecting the switch to the PCB. I'm out of purple, so I chose to use green.
And this is our last solder, the battery connector. And so our finished pedal is now complete. Looks like this. Hopefully it works. Let's go check it out.